An impulse train is a signal created by a sequence of impulses. An impulse has an amplitude of zero for all samples except for one, which has a non-zero amplitude. We can place these impulses together in a sequence or a train to create a periodic signal where the frequency is based on the duration of time between the spikes. This is another situation where we don't have a built-in function in MATLAB to create this signal. Therefore, we're going to write a script ourselves to synthesize it. The way this will work is we'll start out by creating an array of zeros. Then we'll index the array to select specific samples that we want to change the amplitude to 1. After we synthesize this signal, we're going to save it as an audio file. That way we can load it in Pro Tools and analyze the spectral characteristics, compare them to other signals we've seen before. Let's get started writing our script to synthesize the impulse train. Here's a demonstration of some steps that we can use to create a script which will synthesize an impulse train signal. Let's begin by pressing the New Script button. This will bring up a blank M file in the editor window. I'm going to press Command S to save the script and also give it a title. I'm going to name it Impulse Train. When I press Return to save it, see that in the tab that the script has been named accordingly. Before I get to writing any commands, I'm going to add some comments here at the top. I'm going to put in the name of the script for future reference and also a brief description of what this is going to do. This script synthesizes an impulse train signal. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to break this script up into two different examples. The first one will be a visual example so we can see and check that things are working correctly. So here I'll type in example one as a comment. This will be a visual example. And then later on in the code, we'll have example two. This will be our audio example. We're actually synthesizing and creating a file on our computer. So in example one, I'm going to declare some initial parameters. These will be things like our sampling rate. I'll intentionally choose a low sampling rate so it's good to look at. How about 20 samples per second? From there we can calculate the sampling period. Add a comment. This is our sampling rate and also sampling period. Next up, let's pick an arbitrary frequency that we can look at. That we're going to say that there are some number of cycles per second. So F is going to be 5. This is number of cycles per second for our signal. Or the number of times that we have these impulses show up per second. Next, let's create a time vector T. This is for when the timing of each sample in our signal. So here, we'll start at time zero. We'll go up in step size of our sampling period. We'll say this is a one second long signal. Then we also need to transpose this signal so that it's a column vector instead of a horizontal row vector. Time vector of samples. Next. Let's initialize this signal that we're going to create, our impulse train, to start out being all zeros. Then we'll go back through and pick and choose which of these samples need to have a value of non-zero. So we'll say our first one is just impulse example. This is going to be an array of zeros. So we can use this built-in function for zeros. This function requires us to specify the size of this array. So one thing we can use is tell MATLAB to look at the size of t and use that as the size of our array of zeros. We want to match the same exact size of t for our zeros. So now we've got an array. We run this. We've got over here in our workspace, we have t, 21 samples long. And then also our impulse example is 21 samples long. And it's all zeros. I can come down here to the command window and double check how things are working while I'm going through. So I can type out here the array that's been created and press return. You can see that we've got 
a bunch of zeros. So everything's working correctly. Next thing we need to do is figure out which of these samples in our signal we want to change from having a value of zero to having a value of one. That will be the amplitude of this spike that shows up. Well, if we have 20 samples per second and there are five cycles that we need to go through per second, we can figure out which samples or how long, how many samples there should be per cycle. So here we're going to calculate any samples per cycle. This will be based on our sampling rate to meet this requirement of F. So we're going to call this the duration of a cycle. It's going to be based on our sampling rate divided by our frequency. For this example, if we have 20 samples per second, we have five cycles per second, we can figure out that a cycle needs to be completed every four samples. Now because F could be something, any uh, possible number, I'm actually going to add in here a way of rounding the signal. This is because we're going to be indexing the sample number in our signal. So in the next step, when we're indexing that signal, we can't have a fractional index uh, for an element in our array. We have to have a whole number for the element in our array. So in the next step, we'll go back We'll say that our impulse signal that we're using as the example, what we're going to do is actually index starting at sample one and go up in a step size of the duration of our signal all the way to the end. And just for these samples, we're going to assign them a value of one. So here, we're going to say add the spikes or impulses to the signal. So now if I were to run this script, I could check and see what we have for impulse example. So it was the case before we had all zeros. Now we have ones and zeros. And if I like, I could even go in here and plot the result. Say stem t comma impulse example. Run the script and see what we end up with. Here we've got a signal of samples. Starts out at one and we have zero, zero, zero. And then it starts another cycle of our signal. We can count up for every second how many we go through. We've got one, two, three, four, five. So it seems like things are working correctly. Let's move on and create a signal now that we can listen to, an audio example. What I'm going to do in this case is add a comment right in front of this stem command. This way, if we ever want to go back and look at the result, we can still do that, but it won't plot every time we run the script. All right. One thing I'm going to do is make use of a lot of the code we've already created. So copy and paste it. It's a good habit to get into as a programmer. You don't have to type the same things over and over. Okay. But now we want to change some of these initial parameters. Instead of having a sampling rate of 20, Let's make it 48,000, common sampling rate in audio. Now, instead of having a frequency of five, why don't we make it a frequency of 100? Still create a one second long signal. Instead of calling this impulse example, this is where I'm going to change the name of the variable. Call this impulse train. Okay, everything else should be fine. We'll go in here, call this one impulse train as well, where we're changing the value from zero to one for this signal. At this point, we should have something that we can listen to. So the next time I run the script, I'm going to add in this command to listen to impulse train with the sampling rate of 48,000, which gets updated at this point in our code right here. So let me run this script and we can listen to the result. Wonderful. Next. Let me go in and instead of playing back the sound, let's actually write it to a file. So use audio write. Here we need to put the file name, impulse train dot wave. Next we use the array, impulse train, and the sampling rate. I'll run this script. We should see in our current folder that we've now 
synthesized an audio signal and stored it as a WAV file. The next thing I'm going to do is open up a digital audio workstation, load this sound file into the digital audio workstation, and then analyze it. Here, I've opened up my digital audio workstation, Pro Tools. I'm going to import the sound file and then analyze it. So what you need to do is go to your documents, find the MATLAB folder. This is the current directory where we save the sound file, impulsetrain.wave. Now I'm going to add it to my Pro Tools session. Click on new track. Now I have the signal loaded. We can look at the signal's waveform. I'm going to play it back so we can listen to it. The rest of the time, I'm going to mute the track because we can visually analyze it without having to listen to it. So now that we've looked at the waveform, let's look at the spectral characteristics. I'm going to use this plugin from Blue Cat Audio, Frequency Analyzer, a free plugin. Here, I'll play the signal back and we can look at the harmonics that show up in the spectrum. This is a signal that has harmonics that show up at even and odd multiples of 100 hertz. So you have 100, 200, 300, 400. Another thing to look at is the relative amplitude of these harmonics up across the spectrum. In this case, the amplitude is the same across all harmonics. It does not decrease. What we can do is compare this signal to other ones that we've looked at before. I'll open up this other track and use the Blue Cat Frequency Analyzer for this track as well. So on the left, we'll see the signal coming out of the signal generator. And on the right, we'll see the frequency analysis of our impulse train. So here we have a sine wave at 100 Hertz look at a square wave at 100 Hertz. Again, it has odd multiples and the amplitude decreases. Here's a sawtooth wave. It has both even and odd harmonics, just like our impulse train, but the amplitude decreases as well. Finally, the triangle wave, which just has odd harmonics. So there's a comparison of all the signals that we've looked at up to this point. The sine wave, square wave, sawtooth wave, and triangle wave compared to the impulse train that we just created. Here we have in the impulse train, both even and odd harmonics, and the amplitude is constant across the whole spectrum.